Hi, welcome back to Two Souths One Pack. Today we're going to do a tire change on the A2 and change it to a Pirelli street tire. So follow along and let's get it done. So we will start by removing the right side pad as well as the top pad. This will allow us to get the motor cable out to drop the motor out of the wheel. So you'll need your PH2 Phillips screwdriver and then there are just a couple screws on each of the pads. Next, we are going to remove the two 3mm hex in order to make the motor cable free. Now that the motor cable is free, we're going to remove the four bolts on the pedal hangers on both sides. In order to get more slack on the float on the phase wires, we will need to remove this side pad as well in order to remove the motherboard cover. Now if you remove just the top portions, this will give you enough play in order to remove the motherboard screws at the top. Now this cover is held in by 13 Phillips screws, so just go around and remove them all. Once that is done, you can remove the top cover off the wheel. Just be careful of the lift switch to which you can unplug. Now before we unplug the phase wires in the hull sensor to get a little bit more slack on the cable, we're going to remove this battery connector and then drain the capacitors. You can do it a couple times just for good measure, but by this point, there should be no more power on the board. Now you can go ahead and remove the hull sensor wire, as well as the phase wires. Now keep in mind the color coordination. With the newer Big Goat wheels, they do have the length uh, shortened, so it's easier for you to determine which one's which. But when in doubt, if you ever need to check back, it's yellow, blue, and then green. If you look really closely underneath each of the posts, you'll see that in English, it is already written yellow, blue, and green, so you don't screw it up. In previous editions, they had it written in Chinese, but now they've done it in English. Now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna push it through the rubber until this point, so I get the extra couple inches of slack here, and hopefully we can squeeze the motor out of the frame. Now, after you got the frame off the wheel or the motor assembly, uh, it can be a little bit tough to get the valve core out of the valve stem. So as you can see, it's on the opposite side here, which now is a bit tricky for me to get to. Uh, so when you still have the wheel and frame on the stand, go ahead and remove that first to release the tire, the pressure from the tire, and that will allow you to do the tire change as this motor cable is quite tight. Now that the pressure is removed from the tire, you'll want to go and squeeze the tire. It should be fairly easy to squeeze it off the bead and do that for both sides, both the bottom and the top. And then we can go ahead and pry the tire off the rim. If you're using a lot of force to pry the tire off, just remember to squeeze the bottom bead into the gap of the rim, as you can see here. 
which will give you more room up top. Once you have the first bead off, the second bead is a little bit easier. You can almost pry it with just your hands. Be careful not to flip anything. There you go. Just squeeze it over the pedal. There you go. Now we have the Pirelli Angel tire that we're going to put onto the A2. Uh, I'm going to mount this in the rearward orientation because it looks cooler because the V will be facing the direction of travel. If you want to make your life a little bit easier, I didn't realize this pedal was so long. You can remove the pedal. Otherwise, you can kind of finagle the tire around the pedal, which kind of works too. Just like that. And then we can start mounting it on the rim. Now, when you're mounting a tire like this that has a reinforced sidewall, it can be a little bit difficult to maneuver. Uh, if you are having difficulty, what you can do to help you out is to remove the phase wires completely from the wheel, since you have everything opened up already. Uh, and that way you're just dealing with the motor itself. So the only thing that we need to do is to feed this through the, the rubber a little bit further and just make sure you don't pinch any wires or damage anything on the way out. Just be very careful for this hall sensor wire because the sheathing could get stuck. So just be very careful as you do this. Now in my quest to do that, this rubber did break, so I'm gonna to have to replace this rubber seal. Now, being that this is a tubeless tire, uh, you may have some trouble using a standard pump to get it seated on the bead, but let's see how this goes. And if we need to, we may need to visit our gas station or use an air compressor. Now that the bead is fully seated on the rim, now we're gonna remove the air to put the tire valve back in. The reason why we don't put the tire valve in back in the first place is so that the, the volume of air is maximized in order to help it seat on the bead. So now that it's fully seated, we can pump it up and inflate it normally. And now we can go ahead and put the frame back onto the motor. When doing this, we'll need to feed the motor cable through this hole 
and then up to that hole up there. Once you've fed this wire, you can drop the motor, I mean the frame onto the pedal hangers. There you go. And make sure that you have both of your clips that you need to screw back onto the frame. We'll do that last. Firstly, we'll throw this through the hole. When I was removing the motor cables, I had ripped the previous one. So this time I've put in a brand new seal for this wheel, just so that it still maintains its water resistant properties. Now, in order to thread these cables through, uh, sometimes it is beneficial to get one of these expanding pliers. Uh, you can get these from Amazon or your local hardware store. And what it does is it allows you to put it into the seal. And by pulling on the plier, it expands the hole so that you can easily thread your cables through without having to worry about crimping anything. And there you go. Once you've threaded it through, you can release and pull your tool out. That's much easier to do it this way than to finagle and you don't run the risk of ripping the seal. Now we're going to go back and plug back in all the cables that I unplugged to replace the seal. I only have to do this because I replaced the seal. So if you do not replace your seal, you should only have to plug your motor phase wires as well as the hull sensor. Cable, just make sure you get these plastic clips out and you don't lose them because we'll need them later. Make sure your seal is properly aligned with all the holes and the ridges. And once you've done that, what you can go and do now is to re-secure these clips. One is near the bottom here, and one is near the top. So before we go and secure this cable in, uh, sometimes you can get fooled because if you let the shell sit all the way down, there are these screw holes that can screw in. However, when you screw these holes, it'll actually rub the tire on the shell. So what you want to do is actually lift it up and you'll see the silver holes that match up to the narrower ones. And that's where you want to screw the wheel to. Now when putting these motor bolts on, make sure you add some blue Loctite or red Loctite. Let me just open this bottle. And then make sure that you match up your holes to the screws. So I temporarily put in the other side, just so the holds in place. But you can see down here that there are another set of holes and if you let the shell sit all the way to the bottom of the pedal hanger, your tire will rub the frame.
Now that the motor bolts are in place, you'll want to go and thread this motor cable into the groove. And then we will secure it by using these clips to this hole here. So I just want to lift this up a bit. And then one more hole here at the top. So the next step now is to put the top cover on. Just make sure you plug in your lift sensor wire and the purple plug is just hiding back there. So the lift sensor cable plugs right into that little purple plug outlet right there. So make sure you reach in. Now before you screw down this cover, just wanna make sure that your lift sensor wire is routed to the side, because sometimes it can go straight and then you'll have a cable that's covering your display. So just keep an eye on it and then make sure that your screw holes and everything are all lined up and then we'll start to screw it down. So for the top cover, we're using these really long Phillips screws. So on the first pass, as I go through, I'm not tightening them. I'm just making sure that they're all screwed in and secured. Now, before you go and put the rest of the pads back on, at this point, I like to test the wheel just to make sure that there's nothing rubbing and that everything's properly functioning. And I forgot to plug in the power cable. So that's the reason why we test. So as you can see, I forgot to plug in the main power supply. There you go, nice and tight. Now make sure again, your lift sensor cable is not uh, over the screen and you can plop your cover down. Just be mindful of all your screws. And we'll go ahead and screw them all in again. So now that I've connected the power cable, it should turn on. Check your screen to make sure that there's no cables blocking it. And if all is well, turn it back off and continue your repair. So now we're gonna screw back the pads. Now the last step is to put your top cover on. So it's just the four screws to so line things up. And then if you did remove these screws from the pads, these top ones are the silver ones. Make sure everything fits nicely. Okay. 
Let's have the last two screws at the rear. So just push this down, make sure everything's flush. And that brings us to the end of the tire change video for the Bigot A2. Like and subscribe and ding dong ding dong. See you in our next video. Bye.